Let's talk about uh, this question. Uh, we are given that a metal sphere radius R1 has a charge of Q1 and we have to take the inductive potential to be zero at infinite distance from the sphere. Uh, part A talks about what is the electric field and the electric potential of the surface of the sphere. So if this is a sphere having a charge of Q1 and this is a metal sphere, so definitely everything will be on the surface. That's the property of the metal. If we talk about uh, the electric potential or the electric field at anywhere on the surface, then this charge actually, the sphere actually behaves like a point charge have, uh, at a distance of R1 from that point. So uh, we know that if we talk about the electric potential, that's going to be Q1 over 4 pi apps naught R1. And this can be written as KQ1 over R1. So this is the required potential. Uh, and if we talk about the electric field, that's going to be Q1 over 4 pi apps naught R1 square. So that's going to be, can, can be written as KQ1 over R1 square. So that is the required electric potential. Uh, uh, that's the required of, uh, there's a required electric uh, field and electric potential at the surface. Uh, now the sphere, the sphere is now connected by a long thin conducting wire. Uh, to another sphere of radius R2, uh, there are several meters from the first sphere. So there's a reason why they are saying that it is several meters from the first sphere. I will talk about it in, a, in after a couple of minutes. Before the connection is made, the second sphere is uncharged. So let's let's see how this looks like. So we have uh, this as the first sphere uh, with Q1 and R1, and this is the thin cable with which we are connecting another sphere of some unknown charge Q and radius R2. Now, after the electrostatic equilibrium has reached, what are the total charges uh, on each sphere? All right, so uh, since, since they are connected with a conducting <clears throat> a wire, it means that the charge will flow from Q1 to the other uncharged sphere Q. Uh, this is uncharged, I'm really sorry, so there's no Q here. Uh, Q such that their both potential remains the same. Now, the point is over to uh, Q1, the potential is definitely due to Q1 and due to the sphere. But uh, since they have said that they, that is several, several meters from the first sphere, which means that we can ignore the effect of this charge over here and vice versa of this charge over here. So at this surface the only potential is created by the charge q1 and the same is applicable for the other sphere as well so let's say the x charge moves from here to here so the new charge on it that's going to be q1 minus x and the charge on this is going to be x and this it was uncharged initially so this happens until when their potential becomes same so kq minus q1 minus x over r1 must be equal to kx over r2 so K is cancelled. This is a proportion. Let's do a cross multiplication here. We have Q1 minus X times R2 is going to be equal to X times R1. Uh, let's open up the parentheses here. So we have Q1 R2 minus R2 X is equal to X R1. Let's bring uh, this one over to the right. So we have Q1 R2 is equal to X is taken as a common factor. We have R1 plus R2 and the final value of X comes out as dividing both sides by r1 r2 we get q1 r2 over r1 plus r2 so this is the charge which is flown from the surface one to the surface two uh, uh, so the, we need to find the total charge on each sphere so uh, this is the charge on sphere two and the charge on a sphere one is going to be q1 minus x so that's going to be equal to we need to do some math over here so q1 minus q1 r2 over r1 plus r2 so if we take the common lcm and simplify this that's going to come out as q1 r1 over r1 plus r2 so this is the required charge on sphere one uh, net charge now uh Part C asks about electric potential at the surface of each sphere and the electric field at the surface of each sphere. So electric potential uh, will be same for both the sphere because that's when the charging uh, charge flow stops. So we can just find uh, electric potential at any one uh, any one uh, sphere. So let's talk about sphere two. So that's going to be kx over uh, r2. So that's going to be 
k times x x is uh, uh, we already found the x that is q1 r2 over r1 plus r2 and this denominator r2 remains as it is so these two are cancelled so the potential comes out as v of each will be k q1 over r1 plus r2 uh, and then we need to find the electric potential so electric potential at sphere one uh, i'm sorry the electric field at potential one that's going to be k q the q is the new charge right so let's call it q1 dash k q1 dash over r1 square and this is the value of q1 dash so that's going to be equal to k uh, times q1 r1 over r1 plus r2 times 1 over r1 square so that's going to be equal to k q1 over r1 times r1 plus r2 so that is the electric potential uh, there's the electric field at sphere 1 and if we talk about sphere 2 uh, if we talk about sphere 2 uh, that's going to be with the same formula that's going to be kx over r2 square and x is uh, k over r2 square remains as it is and x is uh, q1 r2 q1 r2 over r1 plus r2 so that's going to be equal to k q1 over r2 times r1 plus r2 so this is the net electric field uh, e2 thank you